Are you trying to play community day when it's not actually community day? Well, there's a little trick on how to do this and it's something called nests. If you don't know what nests are in Pokemon Go, nests are going to be big green spaces that for a two week period will spawn consistently one Pokemon. I've visited plenty of nests in my days. In the past, I visited things like Charmander nests, Sableye nests, and you can take my word for me, they spawn a lot of that Pokemon. But the question you might be asking yourself is how do you actually identify a nest? Well, nests are going to be big green spaces on the map in Pokemon Go. You'll notice they're gonna be generally darker and usually things like parks, big green areas, things like that will generally be nests. They obviously can vary in sizes. Smaller parks are gonna be a smaller nest. But if you have giant parks near you, like for example, we have a huge tree park that you can go walk in. It's a giant nest, which means there's a lot of spawn points in there in which there's a lot of Pokemon spawning in that area. Now, unfortunately though, not every Pokemon can appear in these nests. Unfortunately, the Sylph Road was taken down recently, which used to break down and update all the Pokemon that can spawn in nests, but this is a screen grab from a couple weeks ago from what Pokemon can nest. As you can see, plenty of great Pokemon in here. We have things like Carvana, which is a really cool shiny. Pharaoh Seed can nest. Sableye, my favorite Pokemon. Rufflet, a new Pokemon that can nest. And Rufflet's a rare shiny, so that's a pretty nice Pokemon to find in a nest. Even things like Stanler, which has that new evolution, Weirdeer might be coming to the game soon. Overall, this is all the Pokemon that can nest currently. It will be updated in the future, adding more Pokemon, but there's a lot of potential Pokemon that can appear in nests and a lot of rare ones. So you don't wanna sleep on them because those are all potentially Pokemon that you can go ahead and hunt down and shiny hunt at any time of the day. Now the real question comes though, how do we find nests? Generally, parks near you are always going to be nests. Any big green open green space will be nests. But the question is, how do you know what's nesting at a certain time? Well, for me, the best way to find out what Pokemon is nesting at a local park or something is to actually go to the park. I will generally make a habit to go to my local parks and find out what is currently nesting there every once in a while. I wanna know because if there's a Pokemon like Sableye nesting at my local park, I'm gonna be taking multiple visits to that park during that week to try to get that shiny or try to grind some candies or XL candies. However, there's other ways to find nests. Number two, local communities. If you have a local Discord or a local Facebook group, this is a great place where people can call out nests. If you go to your local park and say, hey, Rufflet's nesting here, and then you see another person post and they're like, hey, Sableye's nesting at this park, then I know, hey, oh, Sableye's at this park, I'm gonna go over to that park, I'm gonna take the trip out. Now, the third way used to be the Silf Road Global Nest Atlas, but unfortunately, Silf Road has been shut down. Super sad about that. But I found a new website here, Pogo dot something something nests in which they do have some information on Pokemon nesting. However, this is a global thing, so it's not the greatest. But for example, here on the left, you can go ahead and choose your location. For example, Canada, and it will show me some nests in Canada. Obviously, they're not always gonna be in my area. For example, Coal Harbor, like none of this is close, but Toronto, not too far. You can submit nests, add nests and stuff like that. And that can be a resource for you if you don't have a local group or anywhere, or you can't just go to your local nest to check them out. Now you might be asking yourself though, does the same Pokemon nest forever? And no, nests do change. So there is an opportunity if you have a Pokemon nesting at your local park that you don't want, you just gotta wait till it changes. And this change will happen every second Wednesday between zero and 30 minutes UTC. That translates to my time about 8 p.m. So every 8 p.m., every second Wednesday, the nests do change. So if I do have for a two week period, a Pokemon that I don't really care, spawning at my local park as part of a nest, I can just wait until the second Wednesday at 8 p.m. It'll change to a new Pokemon and hopefully that Pokemon is better. This brings us all to the main question though. Why nests? Like what, what's the point of them? And there's two reasons. Number one, shiny hunting. We saw all the Pokemon on screen that could potentially nest. And there's a lot of nice shinies in there. If you're trying to complete your shiny decks or trying to hunt down a rare shiny that you do not have, and it's spawning at a local nest, it's your great opportunity to go there and grind it. Unfortunately though, it does not have boosted shiny rates. Nests do not have boosted shiny rates. So they're gonna have full odd shiny rates, but there are a couple Pokemon that do appear in nests. Something like an Onyx, which does have a perma boosted shiny rate. So if you do have an Onyx nest, there's a pretty Pretty high chance you find a shiny because onyx does have a 1 in 64 shiny rate but most of the pokemon are going to have full odds still though amazing opportunity especially if you have a big park a huge nest that you can go ahead and shiny hunt number two though my favorite part meta relevancy there's a lot of pokemon that are meta relevant that you might need exile candies but and are not spawning commonly that nests for example something like skarmory something like swineup something like pincer all these pokemon do have meta relevancy with exile candies and regular candies so it can be important to go and find these pokemon in and hunt them down and spend, you know, 
30 minutes to an hour at that nest, grinding and catching that Pokemon. You can even leave with a good IV version of that Pokemon. It also can be very effective for you to properly mega evolve Pokemon when you do go to nest, so you get extra XL candies. For example, in the past, I went to a Charmander nest to try to get some XL candies for the mega form, and I was able to get like 100 XL candies or a decent amount of XL candies after catching and trading from just like an hour at the nest. So it can be very effective method to grind candies and XL candies for a certain Pokemon if you can find it nesting. Overall, nests do take time. They do take patience to find the correct nest for the correct Pokemon you want. But when you find it, it can be one of the most advantageous things and allows you to grind a certain Pokemon that is normally not spawning in the wild, but it is spawning in that specific nest. Comment below what you think about nests, guys. Comment below if you go ahead and take advantage of them or it's just a feature that you kind of skip on. If this is the first time you're hearing about nests, go check out your local park, see what's nesting, because it could be a very effective Pokemon. Follow everybody. Peace.